My favorite place in the world is in an area which would be in the middle of a triangle bordered by Cheyenne, Wyoming, Fort Collins, Colorado, and Laramie, Wyoming. When I was growing up, my family had a mountain cabin there, and I spent hours and hours and hours as a young person thinking about the big questions of life, thinking about God, thinking about my future, thinking about what was important. I had the opportunity to try and explore these questions in the midst of pine trees and antelope and deer and bare and beautiful wildflowers and gorgeous blue skies. I think everyone has a favorite place. My daughter loves the water and the beach but I've always preferred the mountains. As a child and later a teenager, I needed a place to get away and think. I needed a special rock to sit on, which was my rock in my mind, and sent to me, sent for me by God to spend precious moments with Him. It's where the life questions of my lifetime were thought about, not often answered, but given a lot of perspective. It was also family time, the way we, the way we never had while we were in town. My father was a busy physician, but the cabin where he was where he became part farmer and part rancher and very relaxed. And my mom let down her guard as a mother and just let us run and explore and have fun. Even my brother and sister, who were several years older, would stay do things with me when I was at the cabin, so it was my favorite place. I found out a lot about myself and about our loving God during those precious hours at the mountain cabin. We've all had an opportunity to enjoy more free time recently. It has been a cause for, caused by a very devastating set of circumstances, but I have gloriously enjoyed having this free time this past month. I'm alone, my husband is in a care home, so I've not seen him much, and my son and his wife are here in Tucson, but they too are social distancing and trying to keep me safe. In order to keep my sanity, I've developed somewhat of a schedule to my days, but the real blessing of the schedule has been the intentional extra time that I have devoted to God. I have found a real peace and contentment in the extra time that I consider being spending it with God. It is so busy in our daily routine to find time for good prayer. Early morning, during the day when you think of it at night, but I have found lots of time in these last few weeks to pray. Not as much petition as thankfulness and gratefulness. There is so much to praise God for these days. This is a time that's been a gift to me, and I plan to find a way to keep this schedule even when life becomes a little more hectic. During a long winter several month, years ago, I began to sense the need to take some classes at seminary, and I've always loved taking classes on things that were of interest to me, so I signed up for one. After one class, I knew that ministry was where I was supposed to be spending the rest of my life. So I began working full-time in the law office, taking classes at seminary as I could, and after six years, I finally got my Master's of Divinity, was invited to uh, become an associate pastor at the Sun City Church of the Nazarene, the same place where I had practiced law for so many years. And I wrestled a bit with giving up my law, but I seriously never doubted that this was what God's plan for the rest of my life was. I spent 10 years as an associate pastor in Sun City, got my doctorate in ministry during this time, and loved pastoring. I preached, taught, made visits, counseled, and due to the unfortunate illness of our senior pastor, got to do a lot of it. I loved it and I loved pastoring seniors. My husband Bob was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and our lives began to change. Finally in 2017 I knew I had to retire to spend more time with him. We moved to Tucson to be close to my son and his family and I began to attend some OBCN. Pastor Craig was kind enough to offer me a small staff position as director of the Single Moms Program here. And it's been a blessing to me during this time of Alzheimer's and hospice. As I've traveled that journey with my husband Bob. It felt like somewhat of a risk to leave the profession of law for which I trained and practiced many years. I knew it would impact much of our lives and it did, but it was the best move I've ever made and I have enjoyed ministry every day since. Of course, as always, God knew best. I've taken a bit of license here and I've chosen two women, the main women of the Book of Ruth. You know, there are only two books in the Bible named for a woman. One is Esther, whom I also remember, and the other is the Book of Ruth. Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, are the main characters of this very small book, about three pages. But 
our stories are so real and so human. We find God in this precious book being compassionate and working through in some intricate detail the difficult circumstances of these two brave and faithful women to give them a future and a blessing. I relate to Ruth because she is bonded to her mother-in-law, refusing to let her go back to Bethlehem on her own, and she gleans fields when they both return to provide food for herself and her mother-in-law. She is loving and resourceful, and she eventually marries Boaz, who gives both women a better life. And I can relate to Naomi because she uses what means are available to her, including some cunning, to get what she wants for her beloved daughter-in-law, Ruth, seeing what a future Ruth and Boaz might have together. Both are strong, caring women who find themselves in difficult circumstances and keep moving ahead with the gifts and resources provided to them by their loving God. And God richly blesses both of these fine women.